You know, we want to welcome each one to the service tonight. We also want to welcome our online viewers to the service tonight. And we're so happy that you can tune in to be with us. And we want you to know that we see you. And we've been praying for you, especially those that are were growing up here in the Church of God. And they're always online listening to the service because they don't live in the island any longer. And we see that. And we appreciate that. And we love you. And we want you to know that. And we continue to keep bear you up in prayer. And we want to welcome all of those that find it possible to be in the service tonight. Even though it's raining, it was a rainy day, but you still want to be in the house of God. And that's the reason why you're here tonight. And we want to say thank you. Our service tonight will take a different turn. Um, we're not going to have the evangelistic service like we usually do. We're going to have a special service tonight. And this service is entitled, The Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd. The Lord said he lay down his life for his sheep. And we're so thankful tonight that we have that good shepherd that we can rely on and we can cast all our cares upon and knowing that he cares for us. And that's the reason why a lot of us are in this service tonight, because we know the shepherd. And we give God thanks for that tonight. We want to open this service with prayer. And there were some that are supposed to be um, taking part in this service tonight, but they're ill. So we want to bear them up in prayer. And, uh, and we also want to remember the bereavement, those that are lost loved ones, the Sister Chastine and, and, and all the others that are still mourning the loss of their loved ones. We want to bear them up in prayer. We, do we have any other requests? Sister Solita, yes, Sister Solita is traveling for medical purposes. Let us bear her up in prayer also. Yes, and let us remember um, Brother Norman tonight. Brother Norman, uh, you know, is faithful servant of God, and we just want to bear him too up in prayer. And remember Sister Kiki and them as they go through that ordeal there. Um, we want to ask Sister Natasha if she will come and open us with prayer now. Let us stand, please. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're indeed grateful for the blessing of another day, dear Lord. Thank you, dear Lord, for watching over each and every one of us and for allowing us to be in another service, dear Lord. Lord, we come before you this evening, Heavenly Father, acknowledging that it is in you we live, we move, and we have our very being, dear Lord. And we realize, God, that there is nothing that we can do without you, Heavenly Father. Lord, tonight, as we continue in this service, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the promise of the Holy Spirit, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, that where two or three are gathered together, dear Lord, you will be in our midst, Heavenly Father. And we're more than two or three, Heavenly Father, and we know, dear Lord, that you will come in and sup with us this evening, Heavenly Father. And we thank you, dear Lord, for your faithfulness, dear Lord. Lord, tonight you've heard the many requests that have been mentioned, dear Lord. Many of the saints, Heavenly Father, are ill, dear Lord. Sister Olita, Heavenly Father. Brother Norman, dear Lord. Sister Virginia, dear Lord. Lord, there are so many that's ill, so many, dear Lord, that's grieving, Heavenly Father, the loss of loved ones, dear Lord, and the sting of death, Heavenly Father. Oh, Lord, we're so thankful that you're the God of all comfort. You're the God, dear Lord, who sees and knows and understands everything. And dear Lord, many times there are groanings, Heavenly Father, that cannot be uttered, dear Lord, but you're aware, dear Lord, and you will offer comfort, dear Lord, in the time of need. We thank you, dear Lord, for your great faithfulness. We thank you, dear Lord, for the promises of your holy book, Heavenly Father. Lord, we are so thankful, dear Lord, that you left the splendor of heaven and that you were willing to condescend to men of low estate, Heavenly Father, to come to earth, dear Lord, and to suffer, dear Lord, and die so that we could have life, Heavenly Father, and not just have life, but have life more abundantly. We thank you, dear Lord, for the cross, what it means to us, dear Lord, for your great sacrifice, Heavenly Father, and we thank you, dear Lord, for your shed blood, dear Lord, 
We know, Heavenly Father, that without the shedding of blood, my Lord, there is no remission of sin. So tonight we just want to thank you for your shed blood on Calvary's cross, dear Lord. And we are so thankful, Heavenly Father, that we can cast all our cares on you, dear Lord, knowing that you careth for us, Heavenly Father, knowing that you are a God that's alive and live forevermore. And in a changing world, Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you're the God that changes not. You're the God that went after Adam and Eve in the garden. After they disobeyed, dear Lord, and they sinned against you, you still went looking for them. We're so thankful, dear Lord, that you are that good shepherd, that you come looking for us, Heavenly Father, for that one lost sheep. Oh, God, thank you tonight for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your care, Heavenly Father. And thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege that we have of coming before you, dear Lord, in this time of distress, in the time of need, dear Lord, we know that we can cry out to you. We can come to you, dear Lord, knowing that you hear and that you answer in your own time and in your own way. So be with whatever has been planned for the service tonight, dear Lord, all of those that will be taking part. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for those that ha may have filled in the gaps at the last minute, dear Lord. Be with them, Heavenly Father. We're so thankful, Lord, that you're not slack concerning your promises, dear Lord. And we're so thankful that your word shall not return unto you void, Heavenly Father. So we're trusting tonight, dear Lord, and we're believing, dear Lord, that whatever it is that may be accomplished in this service, dear Lord, it will be done, Lord, to your honor, to your praise, and to your glory. Be with Sister Shella. She moderates as well. Continue to bless her, Heavenly Father, and lift her up, dear Lord. Encourage and inspire her, dear Lord. And remember our pastor and his wife tonight, dear Lord, as well. Continue to be with him, Heavenly Father. Strengthen him, encourage him, dear Lord, and uplift him as he continues to be loyal to the call, Heavenly Father. Be with everything that will be said and done. And we thank you, dear Lord, once again, for being the God of heaven, dear Lord, the God that's alive, the God that changes not. And for all that you have done for us, help us never to cease, Lord, to give you all the praise, to give you all the honor, and to continually give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to um, now um, do the 23rd Psalms in unison. Let's stand, and, let's stand and read the word of God, please. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff may comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. To the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. The 23rd Psalm is a comfort. It's a psalm that comforts us. Even when we're going through our troubles and our, our Gethsemanes, as it were, it, it, when we when we read that psalms, it's, it brings such a calm, a comfort feeling over us. And I, if I trust tonight that if you, you you're going through problems and, and and stuff, just remember that God is there and He has promised us that He will be with us and He will always He will not leave us. The only thing that happens is if when we leave Him, He's not going to leave us. So let us let us let us. Take comfort in that tonight. We'll now have a, 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 the choir singing, Gentle Shepherd.
shepherd come and lead us for we need you to help us find our way and we cannot find that way on our own we cannot do it we don't even need to try so we need him to lead us every second of the day let us stay humble let us stay humble at his feet that he can lead us and the path that he wants to lead us. We now have a um, congregation song, 208 in the hymnal.
Thomas Solo by Brother Leroy Daly. His eye is on the sparrow.
now have a, a reading, a poem, penned by Sister Christine. Um, Sister Miriam will do that reading for us, and followed by a solo in the 90 and 9 by Brother Lenny. Night Church. Night. Trust in the Shepherd, by composed by Sister, Sister Christine Wells. Trust in the Shepherd is the right way to go. Trust in the Shepherd through sleep, rain, or snow. Trust in the Shepherd, the keeper of his sheep. Trust in the Shepherd for your safety to keep. Jesus is that Shepherd, for he's the ultimate one for he is the greatest shepherd and is God's only son. He's certainly the greatest shepherd that you can put your trust in, for he is the only shepherd that can save you from sin. Come now to this shepherd who is patiently waiting for you, as this, the greatest shepherd, can make your life brand new. Yes, <clears throat> he's the greatest shepherd who will shower you with love and at life's end, this shepherd will welcome you to your home above. Amen. Evening, church. There were ninety and nine that safely lay in the shelter of the fall, but one was out on the hills away. Far off from the gates of gold, away on the mountains, wild and bare, away from the tender shepherd's care. Away from the tender shepherd's care. Lord, thou have here thy ninety and nine. Are they not enough for thee? But the shepherd made answer this of mine has wandered away from me. And although the road may be rough and steep, I go to the desert to find my sheep. I go to the desert to find my sheep. But none of the ransom ever knew. How deep where the waters cross Now how dark was the night That the Lord passed through Ere he found his sheep that was lost out in the desert he heard his cry, sick and helpless, 
yes, I'm ready to die. Sick and helpless, I'm ready to die. Lord, whence are those blood drops all the that mark of the mountain track. They were shed for one who has gone astray. Ere the shepherd could bring him back. Lord, are thy hand so rent and torn they are passed tonight by many a thorn they are passed tonight by many a thorn but all mountain stand the ribbon and up from the rocky steep there arose a cry to the gate of heaven rejoice I have found my sheep and the angels echo around the throne. Rejoice for the Lord, bring back his own. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice for the Lord, bring back. But even though he had that 99, there was one. There was one that was missing. And he was not content till he find that one. That one. And that one was me and you that were lost. So many times the Lord, we, we, we go through life and from, 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 from little children and stuff and we come up and we find there, there are different dangers and different things that we have gone through. And we find that God's hand was in the midst, bringing us out, bringing us out. He was bringing us out for a purpose. He had a special purpose for each and every one of us tonight. And, and he brought us out because he knew what he had in store for us. He wanted us as his sheep. And that's the reason why he went and he sought, there, sought after us. And tonight, we are his sheep and the shepherd's fold. And let's, let's give God thanks tonight that we are a part of the shepherd's fold. We are a sheep in his fold tonight. And, and, and like I say, the only thing can move us if we go astray. If we go astray, it has to be us. It's not going to be that shepherd. We have now a group song in Shedded Green Pastures. The night season and all the day long in shady green pastures so rich and so sweet, God leads his 
their children along. Where the water's cold flow bids the weary ones feet, God leads his their children along. Some through the waters, some through gives a song in the night season and all the day long. Sometimes on the mount where the sun shines so bright, God leads his their children along. children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song. children along. Through grace we can conquer, defeat all our foes. God leads his their children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through Some days are going to be good, and summer days are going to be bad. Some, we're going to have a lot of trials, and we're going to have a lot of tribulations. But be of good cheer that he said he have overcome, and we can also overcome. 
through His grace, we can overcome. So when these things come upon us, let's not get discouraged. Let's not try to throw in the towel, as it were, and why this is happening to me or why that is happening to me. Sometimes the Lord, I love these things to happen to us, to strengthen us, to bring us through, that, that we could come out stronger than we was before. So don't, 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 when these little sickness come upon you, don't, 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 don't get discouraged. Pull through. Pray true. Ask God for, your, for guidance. Ask him, give me the strength, Lord. I don't know why you brought this upon me, but give me the strength to wade through. Because we, if we don't wade through this, something else is going to take a hold of us. And then we're going to lose out. And our purpose tonight, our main goal, is to make heaven our home. And that's why the kind, the good shepherd is trying to lead us. But we have to follow. We have a speaker tonight. Um, Brother James Miles, he will come now and tell us a little bit about the Good Shepherd in his life. Uh, good night, church. Good night. My pilot text is from Proverbs 27, verse... 23. It is, be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy herds. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pause to thank you for life and for being a good shepherd and for looking well at your flock and to know the state of your flock and to give us whatever we need comfort when we need comfort, encouragement when we are brokenhearted. Watch over us as we go through this service, as we glorify you in all that, we, that you do for us. We praise and honor your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The story of the Good Shepherd is found in St. John chapter 10. And I will try to find a way of linking the two texts so you can see how we should be also trying to emulate the Good Shepherd. As Christians, we live a disciplined life to lead others to Christ. That is, a, in its essence, shepherding a flock. It reads from in John chapter 10, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not at the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the seam is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. That means if you live right, and if you do right, you should be able to lead. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. I could pause here to link the two. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flock. If you can name each one, you know each one. And when thou puttest forth his own sheep, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. To be careful you listen to. Amen. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he will be saved. He shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. All of what you need, you will find in God. Amen. The choice should be easy. And especially for those who are looking online and, and those in the sanctuary who have not made the choice, made Jesus their choice. It should be easy. 
It should be easy. You'll find everything that you need yeah. in God. Yeah. You'll go in and out and find pasture. Yeah. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. This is anybody else beside God. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it with more, more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And he's done that. And he rose from the grave triumphant as a symbol of us resurrecting and spending eternity with him. But he that is a hireling is not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not. See the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. And the hireling flee, fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I am known of mine. As the father knoweth me, even so know I the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, this includes us, praise the Lord, which are not of this fold, because this was directed to the Jews at the time, and it excluded the rest of the world. So thank God we, are in, we can be included in the fold. And I praise the Lord that I'm included in the fold. And we all have that choice to be included. And they shall be one fold and one shepherd. Mm -hmm. Therefore doth a, a father love me, my father love me, because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. Yeah. This commandment have I received of my father. So the good shepherd has laid down his life for me. And so I want to explain good. I say only God is good. The Bible also say that. Yeah. One, there was a conversation when a man came and said, good, for, good rabbi, what shall I do? And Jesus answered him and said, why call me good? Yeah. Only God is good. Yeah. So in essence, the man was telling him, I see God when I see you, Jesus. So when we talk about the good shepherd, we talk about God. And Jesus always used these agricultural illustrations and especially called himself a shepherd. But it also is to show the difference between his way of thinking and our way of thinking and the divide that we have. That's why he said we're sheep of his shepherd, uh, of his sheep pole. And if we're part of his pasture, we follow him and we know his voice and no other voice. But the way sheep operate is they follow whatever the shepherd do. Everything the shepherd do. They rely completely on the shepherd because their thinking is down here. And the shepherd thinking is up here. And the Bible also says the way of my thinking is so far higher than the way that you think. So that is why he also called us sheep. Sheep are, they have to be led. They have to be nurtured. If not, they don't survive. They just pray for any, any predator, food for any predator. And we have an adversary that is roaming about looking for prey. And we thank God for the good shepherd that he can cover us yeah. and can seek us out. That's right. The parable of, that was spoken of with the 99 and it, it takes a good person to even count a hundred sheep. Mm -hmm. Moreover, know a hundred sheep. And then to know where that lost one would be. Yeah. Just think about that. If you had a hundred of anything and one went missing, 
where would you think you would find out? But this this person knew that they were on the byways on the rocks, because that way he likes to drift. It takes a good shepherd to know his sheep. And he seek him out, and he left the ninety nine, and go and get me. Go and get you. Go get you on social media. Cause he know where you is. But it also talks about us as parents. Because we lead too. And we're supposed to know our own too. Because it says, be thou diligent to know the state of thy flock. Everybody got a little flock. If you are teaching a class, show me got a little flock. Even when you're at the workplace, even if you're not a boss, you still got a little flock. They all need to know the Savior. They all need to be in the sheepfold of the Good Shepherd. We have a responsibility as Christians. To shepherd the flock that God has put us in. No matter where it is. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flock. You know who your co-workers are. And who really need Jesus. And by living a life in front of them, you can show them the way. If you have children and they live in your household, you have a certain level of authority. They know your voice. So be thou diligent to know the state of thy flock and look well to thy herds. My pilot text was taken from Proverbs because every month that has 31 days in it, I read Proverbs. And I want to let you know that the Bible has answers to all of life's questions and is always timely. So last week when Sister KK said, must um, say something about the shepherd, I said, I'm pretty sure I'll find something to say. The Lord will lead me to where he needs to lead me. So today's reading of Proverbs 27 is my pilot text. Mm -hmm. Timely. Mm -hmm. And a timely reminder to me as a parent and grandparent that I need to look to my flock. Mm -hmm. Look to the state of your flock. Be diligent to know them. So when the last time you asked your child how your day was? And to look well to thy herds, that's everything that you have influence over. So we have a task before us as life presents itself this week to share the good news of the good shepherd. And to look diligent diligent to the flock that we have. Our little circle. One of the great things I saw was how Sister Joyce and had so much of her friends here for her birthday. She got a flock. She know them well because she know that they would come if she asked. They know her voice. And so she has a flock that she could influence well. And Sister Joyce, it was great to have them here. Uh, And if you can encourage them to come every other Sunday, it would be great. Amen. Because I don't understand how people not choosing Christ. Mm-hmm. It makes life so much simpler. Amen. You have something to lean on that you can Amen. lean on and know it won't fall. Right. You have guidance that's beyond your wisdom. Guidance, if you lean into it, you know you can't go wrong. That's a comfort in itself. It's like, if I ask God to lead me every single day in every decision that I have, that I have to make, let it be to glorify his name. I can't go wrong. 
You really can't go wrong. It might not make you friends with a lot of people. I just let you know from now. A lot of people don't like when you talk about God. A lot of people don't like when you try to give God credit. But I just tell them, well, I know he keeps my heart beating. I'm sure he keeps yours beating too. Because none of us has that rhythm to say, okay, I can keep my heart beating whenever. So for that, you should, should actually be worshiping him. I'm alive. I should praise God. And if they don't want to make too many mistakes, and if you're looking for wisdom, you can join me in reading Proverbs. Every month that there's 31 days in it, there's 31 chapters. You read a chapter a day. It has helped me grow. And it could help you grow. So it's only seven of them out of the year. Only a little bit more than half. Right? January, March, May, July, August, October, and December. Only then. But it's seven months that you have additional knowledge that is given from God. The first time we read, I read Proverbs is something that my grandmother kind of forced us grandchildren to do. And she said it was a search for wisdom. So as we went through, we had to write down the number of times we saw the word wisdom. And as I've been doing it over the years, I've seen, I don't just want to search for wisdom. I want that wisdom. I want to be wise enough to share with the people around me. I want to be wise enough to lead people because people look to me now. And I'm like, oh, I need, I need the wisdom, Lord. I need it every day so I don't misguide anyone and that I don't go astray. So you all continue to pray for me as I pray for you all. And having me to talk for more than 15 minutes up here is kind of tight. But I'm hoping that you've got something from the word tonight. And that you have a responsibility as a Christian to live a disciplined life. A life worth emulating. And that the flock that you can influence, you do so daily. God bless. Thank you, Brother James, for your kind and encouraging words. We'll now have a solo, The Shepherd of My Valley by Sister Georgian. Good night, church. What would I do? shepherd of my valley Lord I just couldn't walk this road alone when I'm hungry he feeds me when I'm thirsty he's my water I couldn't make What would I 
Jesus, what would I do? What would I do? I wonder sometimes, I wonder, I wonder sometimes what would we have been? What would we, where, 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 where would we have been tonight if it wasn't for that good shepherd? Thank the Lord. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. We now have a, a song by the choir, My Sheep Know My Voice.
sheep know my voice, and the cool sparkling stream, where beside is still water. to the end of the service. I trust that something that was said tonight touched you and you got a blessing from being in this service tonight. And I want to say to those that don't know the shepherd, get to know the shepherd. And I'm not saying get to know him by hearing what, other, what others say or reading about him. I'm talking about getting that deep personal experience with him. Because when you get that deep personal experience with him, it makes all the difference. It makes all the difference in your life, in your family life, your marriage life, your work life, your, your, the school life for your children, your, your, your home life. It makes so much different when you know him as your personal savior. I trust that each one this week will ponder in their heart, what can I do to know him as my personal savior if you do not know him? May God help us tonight that we will continue, those that know him, that we will continue to seek after him day after day, minute after minute. Because let me tell you, there is a roaring lion out there seeking whom he may devour. And they do not want to see no Christian make it. Even when, you, when we feel that we're, we're, we're so in with God and everything is going so good, is then the enemy comes in. And he tries to bring us down. But I trust that you will know the enemy wise and you will know the Lord's wise. That good shepherd's wise. And you will seek after it day by day. May God help us. We'll now close the service from the hymnal, page 122. Let 
to stand, please. shepherd. Tonight we are so grateful, Lord, that when we strayed away there, Father, you knew us by name and you called us there, God. We thank you that we knew your voice there, Father, and that we came there, God, and we're safely in your fold. Oh, Father God, tonight there are many there, God, that has not heeded to your voice, that are outside the fold there, God, where they can be devoured by this one who's seeking there, God, to devour them. But, oh, God, we pray tonight for them in a mark way. We pray tonight, Lord, that they will heed your call, dear God, before it's too late and get into your sheepfold, dear Father, away from the dangers and harms of this world. We thank you, dear God, for the service tonight. Indeed, it has reminded us that we have a shepherd, one who cares for us, one who loves us, and one who will always be with us, one who leads us from day to day through this journey of life. Lord, we thank you for being our good shepherd. We thank you for the sacrifice you made, dear God, on your cross that you would be the shepherd to lead us. Lord, we thank you for all that has been accomplished in this service tonight. Indeed, it was rich, and we thank you for it. Continue to abide with each one of us, dear God. Again, we're praying for those that are sick. 
We are praying for those that are mourning. We are praying for those that are in need. My God, whatever the situation is, we know that you're mindful of every situation and every condition. But Lord, you told us to ask, and we're just reminding you, O oh God, to hold to your great and precious promises that once we ask and we believe there, God, and we live for you, that you will hear and you will answer our prayer. So reach down in mercy tonight and touch souls and bodies, dear Father. Provide and open doors for those who need an opening tonight, dear God. So bless us now, Father, as we depart from this building, but not from your presence. Go with us, dear God. Abide and lead us, dear God, through this week. And that all that we will do, Lord, help us to help someone else along life's way. And be with us in a mighty way, we pray. These things we ask in no other name, but the name of your good shepherd, your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.